See, the more we, the more we listen to the voice of God, the more focused we become. Amen. And the enemy tried to defocus the church, confuse the church. But you see, Jesus declared in His Word, He said, that upon this rock of revelation of who Christ is, Jesus said, I will build my church. So you see, Jesus declared that His church that He's building is a church that cannot be shaken. Amen. So it's either you understand what he say it's either you stand on what he say or don't believe what he say so makikita po natin mga kapatid at this point of time it seems the church is being pushed to the limit that the enemy is trying to bring limitation to the church Mga kapatid, hindi po tayo dapat magpapalimit because God designed that the church is the vehicle of the unshakable kingdom. Amen. The church is the visible expression of the invisible Christ. Amen. That's why we are called the body of Christ. When Jesus was given the body, he gave expression to the invisible Father. The Father who is unseen began to be understood when Christ was given a body. At tinawag po natin, Jesus. And that body was taken up to heaven in Mount Olive. Edi wala na siyang expression dito sa earth. Kanino pa siya mag express so if Christ was given the body to bring expression to invisible Father, Christ was given a body to demonstrate and manifest the invisible Christ. That's why we are called the body of Christ. Amen. So hindi po tayo mawawala sa focus po natin. Kaya po tayo nagtatayo at nag advance ng kingdom ng Panginoon. Hindi po ang ating kingdom ang ating po ina-advance. It's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. That's why you were born again in the kingdom. Yes. You were not born again in the church. Amen. You're born again in the kingdom. Amen. You're born again from above. Amen. You are from above. Yes. So you must not be affected by the issues on the earth. Yes. So why we allow the issues of vaccination divide us? Yes. Amen. So why we allow the earthly issue confuse us? So hindi po dapat mangyari ang mga kapatid. Why? Because the church was designed by the Lord that the gates of hell, the power of infernal region, shall not prevail against His church. Amen. Actually, sa ganitong intense na shaking in our time, nag-i-emerge ang tunay na church. Amen. Yes. Yung po hindi niya na-build, anything that Christ has not built will collapse. Yes. Anything that Christ built will continue to stand up. Amen. That's what He said. The builder of his church is Christ himself. Yes. Jesus said, I will build my church. It is not a man who built the church. It is the Lord. Hey, pakikuha nga yung presente. Asan si David? Hallelujah. Today we need to refresh ourselves. 
saan po ba nakaugat ang authority ng church? Saan po ba tayo nakatungto? At anong klaseng pundasyon ng ating tinutungtungan? Ano ba ang lumalabas ngayon ng mga mensahe sa mga pulpit? You see, why, why is it that in times of Paul, they demonstrate the kingdom of God so powerfully? Today, the good news is being diluted. At ang liit ng tingin ng tao sa atin ngayon. But the church was positioned by the Lord. He said, you are a city on a hill. What is the meaning of the city on the hill? You are the next showcase of a society. Amen. Tayo daw po yung next showcase of a society na kaiinggitan. That's why we were called the city of God. Amen. Whose builder and architect is God. Amen. So, today, I want us to refresh ourselves about our ultimate victory kung saan po ito nakaugat. The way of the cross is the ultimate victory of the saints. Yeah. Now listen church, we are not fighting to win. We are fighting because we are already won. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we must have that concept that we are not fighting to win. Because if your concept is fighting to win, you will struggle. But if your concept is you are fighting because you are implementing what Christ has done on the cross. Amen. Then you will not struggle. The church must not struggle. We must rise above every difficulties. Amen. Jesus said, He who is born from above is above all. Amen. Everyone say, Above all. Above. Tell your brother, You are above all your problems, Amen. above difficulties. Above every challenges in this life. Because you were born from above. <laughs> Do you believe it? It should be what? A reality. If those things are not reality, then it's only a concept. It must be real. The word of God said, you shall know the truth. The Greek word for the truth means reality. Amen. You shall know reality and the reality will set you free. Amen. Set you free from what? From the deception. From everything that you learn from the world and it presented to you as reality. But it's not. It's a deception. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here? Amen. We have accumulated a lot of do-it-yourself reality in the world. For example, the world said, you got to learn 20 years in order to live. Is it a reality? Or is it a standard of this world? That is the standard of this world. When Jesus Christ came, He began to express the wisdom of God. He is the wisdom of God. And Christ showed us how to live. Amen. For 30 years, He built His spirit. He became strong in spirit and grew in wisdom. But not the things of this world. Hello? Amen. And then He met Peter and John na nag struggle na mamuhay sa mundo para sila ay manghuli ng isda. Naalala niyo yung story? Yes. Sila ay fishermen. And the way they live is to catch fish. And for three years, na hindi sila ng isda, isipin po natin saan sila kumuha ng kanilang sustenance. Meron ba kayong ba idea paano kumain si Peter yung kanyang yung kanyang pamilya for three years, hindi naman sila nangisda. 
Kasama nila si Lord kahit saan. They were exposed in a certain type of lifestyle that Christ demonstrated. Peter understand be, to be he begin to understand what it is how to walk above the water. Natutong lumakad si Peter sa dagat. At natutong kumuha si Peter ng pambayad ng tax sa bibig ng isda. Ano ba si pag-aaral nito? Hindi ka dito orientation sa mundo. And then after three years na nakita ni Peter paano kumain ang liman libong tao out of five bread and two fish. Nag-imbestiga pa yung kanyang in-laws. Tinignan niya kasi nabalita na niya, nag-full time si Peter. <laughs> Sumunod kay Lord. Pumunta sa bahay, tinignan kung anong lagay ng kanyang asawa. At that time, nagkasakit yung kanyang biyanan, nilagnat hindi makapagsilbi. Nandun si Lord, pinagaling yung kanyang in-laws. Nag-serve agad, nagkaroon ng miracle right there. Nag-serve agad, nawala yung lagnat. Nakumbinsin niya yung kanyang in-laws na okay yung sinamahan ni Peter. Amen. <laughs> Alam mga pastor, kumusta mga pinan? Praise God. Minsan kasi kapag nagkaasama ng mga pastor yun, ha? Kasawa ka ng pastor! Para bang alin ng tingin ng pastor? Para bang pagkakasawa ka ng pastor, maghihirap ka? Pagkasawa ka na lang ng iba, huwag lang pastor. Please ka. Ba't kaya gano'n ang stigma? Huh? After three years, what happened? Namatay si Lord. Nung namatay na si Lord, Anong ginawa ni Peter? Sabi niya, anong ginawa niya? I'll go back fishing. Hmm? Three years. Sinanay na lumakad sa provision ng supernatural. After three years na matay si Lord, in three days nakalimutan niya yung tinuro. <laughs> I'll go back fishing. Wala na ako makita rito. Kamali yata ako sa pagsunod kay Lord. Ba't siya namatay? Hello? Sabi ni Peter, babalikan ko yung bangka ko. Doon ako sanay mabuhay. Eh. Sabi naman ni John, sama ako sa'yo. Alam mo yung backsliding, nakakahawa yan. Praise God. Sino rito tinuruturoan ng Holy Spirit? Being taught by the Holy Spirit how to live by the overcoming creative grace of God. Amen. That through the years, the grace of God or the power of God sustains you. Amen. Hallelujah. Alam mo sabi ni Paul na yung kanyang relationship kay Lord, sabi niya, marami akong pinayaman. Hallelujah. Mga pastor, marami daw tayong payayaman. Eh. That's the word said. So at this point of time ng ating pong history, it seems para bang para bang na-sideline yung church, para bang nalimitahan yung church, para bang nanghina yung church. Lalo na yung church na punta na lang sa virtual. Nasa Zoom na lang. Wala na yung katulad na ganito. Bumaba na sa alert level number 2. Kaya pala nilang ibaba? Something is wrong. So, ibig sabihin, merong behind na nagmamanipulate nito. Merong nagpo-program nito kapag hindi mo pinagana ang discernment mo. Saan ka magtataka na itong sitwasyon na ito? Yung mall bukas, sinihan bukas, kasino bukas, yung church sarap. 
Yes. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Indirectly, this is a persecution. Pero hindi ito direct persecution. Kasi you need discernment why these things are happening. Yes. yes. Because only the church is the only body that can hinder the manifestation of Antichrist in its appointed time. Amen. Amen. Until this hinderer or restrainer will be taken out of the way. Yes. So, ibig sabihin, we need to stand to restrain it. Amen. Amen. But, church is not restraining it because the church is not fully awakened. Kailangan magising po tayo. Hindi mo sa yung katabi. Pag nagising ka, tapos na. When you are awakened, it's all over. But if you keep on sleeping, it will be over the world. So we need to understand and go back to our ultimate foundation, which is the cross. The way of the cross is the ultimate victory of the saints. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, let's have the scripture. What the word says. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The word perishing means stagnation. The word perishing means decay. The word perishing means corruption. Meaning to say those who allow corruption and stagnation to their life the message of the cross is foolishness. Yes. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why is it that the cross becomes the wisdom of God and the power of God? Bakit kaya? Alamin natin. Bakit ba? Bakit kaya naging wisdom ang cross at naging power ang cross. Remember the prophecy in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Anong sinabi niya? The seed of the woman will what? Crush your head. The seed of the serpent. Are you here? So, Makikita natin na nag-prophesy na si Lord ng pagkatalo ni Satanas sa Genesis 3.15. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Balik, uh, Genesis 3.15. Look what happened to Genesis 3.15. This is a clear picture of a future defeat of the enemy over our life. In Genesis 3.15, let us read it, Gia. He said, I will put what? What is enmity mean? War. Sabi mo sa yung katabi, sa Genesis pa lang may gera na. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa pwedeng maging kampante sa kinalalagyan mo ngayon. Dahil ang tunay na kristyano, may gera. Diba? May labanan. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between your offspring and hers. Now look at this word. He Hallelujah. He will crush your head. Sa NIB kasi nakalagay, maliit na he. Sa, sa King James, tignan mo kung nakalagay. Ano nakalagay? Lalo na sa ano. Ang nakalagay is malaki. And her seed, it shall bruise your head, thou shall bruise his hip. Between thy seed, sa Amplified, nakalagay yung seed na yun is capital S. Talking about a seed. Dito, Ito ang unang prophecy ng Panginoon para kay Kristo. Ang tawag sa Kanya, He was hidden in the seed 
of a woman. Meron kang amplified, Gia? Wala. Ha? Amplified na ito. O, ayan. Offspring ang nakalagay. No? Between your offspring and her offspring. Sa ibang translation, seed. Sa King James ang nakalagay, seed. New King James ang nakalagay, seed. So, nagtago si Jesus sa seed of a woman. At pagdating doon sa Exodus, nagtago si Jesus saan? Sa Passover land. Pagdating sa Deuteronomy, Jesus was hidden in the pillar of fire by night and pillar of cloud by day. And He was also hidden in the manna na kinakain nila. So in many ages, this seed was hidden. The mystery was hidden from ages and generation. But now, God said, it was now revealed to His holy apostles and prophets. What is this mystery? The Christ inside of you, the hope of glory. It was hidden, but God is revealing it now. So you could understand the mystery. So what is this mystery? Nung marinig ito ni Satan na declaration, inunahan niya, inaabangan niya ang seed na ito. Akala niya si Abel ang seed. Pinatay ni Satanas si Abel. At dumating ang iba't ibang mga tao, dumating si Abraham, akala niya ito na. Pero hindi, namatay si Abraham. Hanggang si Isaac dumating, si Jacob dumating, lahat sila namatay. Hanggang sa dumating yung mga prophet, nagsasalita ng word. Kala ni Satanas, ah, ito na. Pero hindi. Pinatay pa rin. So, iisa lang ang style ng kaaway. Lahat ay ang kanyang gagawin, nakaprogram sa utak niya. Yung dudurog ng ulo niya, kailangan unahan niya para hindi mangyari. So, isa lang yung kanyang nasa isip. Bago niya ako patayin, papatayin ko siya. Kaya sa panahon pa lang ni Moses, bago pa lumaki yung dudurog ng ulo niya, nag-declare ang, 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 ang pero ng Egypt na lahat ng male child sa Egypt na ipapanganak, kailangan patayin. At pagdating doon sa New Testament, ganun din ang kanyang style. Nung dumating si Jesus Christ at sinabi ng mga wise men na ipinanganak na ang hari, nagulo si Herod, kaya nag-declare si Herod, two years pa baba ng mga lalaki, kailangan patayin. So ganito katreten si Satanas sa parating. Nakita ito ng Diyos. Ah, sabi ni Lord, isa lang pala ang nasa utak mo. Papatayin mo lahat. Kaya nag-isip ang Diyos ng paraan paano manalo. At ang kanyang wisdom is since lahat, nakaprogram sa utak mo, papatayin mo sila. Meron akong ilalagay sa huli na ang wisdom ay pag pinatay mo siya, yun ang panalo. Amen. <laughs> That's why the cross becomes what? The wisdom of God and the power of God. Because for the Greeks and for the Romans, the cross is weakness. But because of the cross, hanggang ngayon, ang cross ng Panginoon ay nagko-conquer ng mga kaluluwa sa iba't ibang bansa. As the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached, it is the power God. But somehow, dumating yung time sa panahon po natin na ang preaching hindi na yung cross. Wala nang dugo sa preaching. Turo, pampayama na lang sa physical ang mga nakakarinig na preaching. Na wala nang dugo sa preaching. It's no longer bloody. At ang mga preaching na gusto-gusto natin marinig yung mabibless ka. Kakaroon ka ng kotse. Kakaroon ka ng bagong bahay. Hello? Kaya pala nang hina ang church. Na wala tayo doon sa focus ng cross. Kailangan muling maibalik ito. Hello? Mga kapatid, tandaan po ninyo ito. Bago ka panilikha, inuna muna ni Lord ang kakainin mo. 
So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa nagpe-pray ng pagkain. Nasa isip na ni Lord, yung pagkain, bago ka niya niya. Kaya dapat yung prayer natin, hindi yung Lord pengi nito para makakain ako. Hmm? Let's go back sa ating slide. So, it is Christ. For Christ did not send me to baptize. Ito mo ninyo. Yung focus ni Pablo, sabi niya, hindi ako sinin para mag-baptize na mag-baptize na mar marami sa tubig. But to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Mga kapatid, how do you preach the word of God? How do we preach the gospel of Christ? Meron pa bang power? Puno pa ba ng kapangyarihan yung cross na pinipreach natin? Yes, Lord. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let's go back, paano tayo na born again? Paano ka ba na born again, mother and us? Paano ka umiyak? Paano ka na-convict? Hindi ba nung makita mo, na-realize mo na merong napako sa krus? Amen. Today, hindi na ganun yung presentation ng gospel. Makinig ka ng word, yayamang ka. Nasa na yung krus? Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. Bakit tayo pinapopokus doon? Why? Why we need to focus? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Bakit? Ano ba ginawa ni Jesus na dapat nating tularan? He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. To mature our faith. Who? For the joy that is set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now look at the word. It says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So bakit daw nagwiwiri ang mga tao ngayon? Bakit daw ang mga kristyano ngayon nang hihina? Nagwiwiri, ina-entertain yung spirit of weariness sa kanila at yung iba ay merong urge to quit and to give up because they lost their eyes on Him. Amen. <laughs> Nawala na rin. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Kaya pala sa Last Supper, ang sabi niya, take this bread. This is my body. Hindi ni demonstrate niya sa, pinipicture niya sa utak nila. Ito ang mangyari sa katawan ko. Every time you drink of this blood and eat of this bread, remember me. Gusto ko dito mo ako alalahanin. Gusto ko dito ninyo ako alalahanin. Amen. Hindi doon sa signs and wonders, hindi doon sa pagbuhay ng patay, hindi doon sa pagpapagaling ng may sakit. Kung saan ako nagsapit, dito mo ako alalahanin. Amen. Specific yung kanyang sinabi, I want you to remember me in this area. Amen. Kaya pala tayo pinapifix. So that you will not grow will and not lose heart. That in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Your blood. Hallelujah. Mga kapatid, pandemic lang, bumikibang ka. Hindi, sabi rin, hindi parang tumutulo yung dugo mo sa pakikipaglaban sa kasalanan. Gumigibap ka na. Wala pang tuluan ng dugo itong mga kapatid. Wala ka lang pamasahin. Quick-quick ka na. Wala lang mga 
ay nagkikwit ka na. Hindi ka pa tinutuluan ng dugo niya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sabi mo sa inyong katabi, huwag ka magkikwit. Yeah. <laughs> Alam mo, an makinig kayo mga pastor, ang daming nakaka-discourage sa loob ng church. Yes. Ito na ngayon yung patibayan, hindi ito paramihan, patibayan ito mga kapatid. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Nung dumating yung pandemic, sa napunta yung mga tao na nag-church sa mall, biglang nawala. Nung inalaw ng Panginoon na sitwasyon na ito, yung mga sikat na church, wala nang sikat na yun. Pero yung nag-church lang sa bahay, walang adjustment, ganun pa rin. Kasi sa bahay na talaga sila. House to house. Ganun ang ginawa namin sa church. Wala pa kami house to house kami. Pero may Sunday service na tuloy-tuloy ang face-to-face -face meeting ko namin. So mga kapatid, sini? Ano raw ang nagmamotivate kay Jesus? Bakit niya na-injure yung cross? Sino ang motivation niya? He set the joy. There is a joy that is set before him. May nakaset. Amen. Amen. Kaya pala, kaya pala, na-injure niya yun. May nakaset. There is a joy that is set before him. Amen. Meron siyang tinitignan beyond the cross. Amen. At alam mo kung sino yung tinitignan niya beyond the cross? Ikaw! Amen! Amen! Amen. Sinasabi niya habang natitikman niya yung koron, ang tinik habang siya ay na, nalalati ko sa likod, pinipicture ka niya. Tinitiis niya ang lahat ng sakit na yon sa kanyang likod. Bakit? Sige na, saktan niyo ko. Bakit? Habang ginuguhitan niyo ang aking likod, inaararo niyo ang aking likod ng latigo, gumagaling naman ang aking anak sa future. By His stripes, we are healed! You are the joy that is set before Him. Amen. I said, you are the joy that is set before Him. That's why He has the power to endure the cross. And in return, bakit tayo mag endure sa panahon ngayon? Dahil naman na intindihan natin yung kanyang pag-ibig na ginawa niya sa cross. Ibig sabihin, ang pinakamatinding motivation mo bakit hindi ka basta-basta maigupo ng kaaway, ma hindi ka basta-basta gumigib up, because you understand His love. Amen. The cross. That's why fix your eyes on Him. Don't lose your focus on Him. Amen. Glory to God. You see, number one, Jesus is revealing the plan of victory to his disciple before going to the cross. Jesus was not yet on the cross and yet he is saying in advance this to his disciple. He said, then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Meaning to say, wala pa si Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus is already revealing the plan of victory. Amen. And yet, his disciple at that time, they don't understand what Christ is saying. And Peter began to realize one day when Jesus' statement was said, destroy this temple and on the third day I will raise it up again. He began to understand the mystery, the revelation of the cross. So you see, Jesus is saying this word. Jesus was not yet at the cross. He is still on the road going to the cross. It's only in Luke chapter 9. He is now revealing to His disciple the ultimate plan of God, the ultimate plan of victory for
for the church. Amen. That he must deny himself and take up his cross daily. Everybody say daily. daily. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not easy to carry the cross daily. Amen. Meaning to say every day you will make a decision. Every day we will make a choice Amen. to deny ourselves. Hallelujah. Nananahimik na. Amen. Alam mo pagka madugo na ang usapan, makakatahimik. <laughs> daily. Hindi ba one time lang? Bakit daily? Because every day there is a battle. Amen. Amen. Every day there is a different situation and environment that you need to decide and make a choice daily. Hallelujah. See, in this verse, Christ clearly stated that our ultimate victory is on the cross. In Luke 14, 26, it says this, If anyone comes to me and does not hate, See, the word hate there means in comparison with. If you will compare your love between your father and Jesus, it becomes hate. As if it becomes hate. So he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, what a cost for a discipleship. He cannot be my disciple. Oh. Madali ba yung standard na yan? Mahira. Pero attainable. It's attainable if you're willing to die. Glory to God. And he said, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. So meaning to say, the will of God must rise up. The will of God is much higher value than any relationship on earth. Why is it that Jesus in the scripture he never called at one time in the scripture Mary as his mother? Because he knew one day there will be a doctrine that will come out. Mama Mary. <laughs> He was so full of wisdom. There is no one scripture that Jesus Christ called Mary as mother. He called him as a woman. Even at the cross, when he delegated his mother to John, he said, Woman, this is your son. Son, this is now your mother. Jesus never allowed any human relationship on earth to compromise the will of God over his life. Yes. He never allowed his disciple to manipulate him to go to the cross. He even said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Hello? No relationship on earth must be used by the devil to stop you doing the will of God. Amen. Yes. That's how Jesus focused on his mission. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Doing the will of God becomes Jesus' food. 
Hallelujah. So this is the cross. Matthew chapter 10 verse 38. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Wow. Look at this. Look at this statement. Anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Sabi mo sa'yo katabi. Do you understand it? Hallelujah. How can we be worthy of the Lord? Take up His cross. Follow Him. Matthew 16, 21, Jesus made it clear that His disciple that it was now necessary. Everybody say necessary. necessary. So it was necessary for Jesus to die on the cross. And it is also necessary for us to carry the cross. It is not an option. It is necessary. So Jesus submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders and be killed. And on the third day, be raised up alive. Amen. So Jesus is prophesying over his death. Amen. Jesus almost daily reminding himself of his mission, of his focus, of God's will over his life. On the third day, he will rise again. Almost every day. And his disciple heard it. Is he right? Hindi maintindihan at that time by his disciple what Jesus is talking about. Because Jesus is rehearsing, reminding himself of that focus. He is focused on the ultimate victory over the devil. And the devil is trying to what? Prohibit him, prevent him to go to the cross. Hallelujah. In Luke 9.51, as the time drew near of his return to heaven, he moved steadily onward to Jerusalem with an iron will. With an iron will. For what? To die on the cross. You cannot sway Jesus. You cannot destroy the focus of the Lord on that ultimate victory. Hallelujah. Amen. See, see, Jesus focused on dying. The devil is also focused on killing him. So there is a sure victory. Hallelujah. Walang kawala yung victory. Ngayon, sino na kukumbinsi sa iyo na huwag mamatay? Hello? Praise God. Luke 9 51, as the time drew near in the TLB version, his return to heaven, he moved steadily onward toward Jerusalem with an iron will. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 24 25. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ. Is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible said if they only knew the wisdom of God, they would not have crucified <laughs> Jesus. Kung alam lang nila ang plano, hindi sana nila ipapako. Bakit? Kasi ang plano, pag pinako, siguradong panalo ang tao. Amen. Glory to God. This is the wisdom of God. John 19.30 When he had received, he's already on the cross, he said, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. It is not a cry of defeat. It is a cry of victory. The devil is finished. Sickness
sickness and disease are finished. Yeah. The sorrow and the curses of man because of the disobedience of Adam, it is already finished. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. <laughs> Every struggle that you are complaining right now, the Lord said, it is finished. God put to an end every kind of sorrow on the cross. He carried our sorrow. It's finished. That's why you are fighting into a finished war. It's already finished. And it must become a reality to you. It's not just only a memory verse. It must be a reality. Amen. Glory God. Number two. Paul embraced and boasted only of the crucified Christ. Why is it that Paul focused on him on this matter? You see, you can never be apostolic if yours, if Christ is not the center of your message. Paul embraced and boasted only on the crucified Christ. First Corinthians two, verse one. As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come to you proclaiming to you the testimony and the evidence or mystery and the secret of God concerning what He has done through Christ. For the salvation of man in lofty words of eloquence or human philosophy and wisdom. Meaning to say, Paul is saying, I did not dilute the message of the cross. I did not come to you with eloquence, man's wisdom. Hmm. Hallelujah. Sino, sino pinapatamaan niyan yan? Si Apollos. Ang galing orador. Ang galing sa word. Very eloquent. But we must not replace the power of God by eloquent. Yes. Yes. Not in lofty words of eloquence or human philosophy and wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make a display of knowledge of nothing, and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, in Him crucified. That's the very foundation of the power of the gospel. If the people will not understand the crucified Christ, the gospel is diluted. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Kapag ka sila ay nasaid dahil natakot lang silang pumunta ng impyerno, hindi gospel ang nagligtas sa kanila. Takot. Kaya nandiyan dyan yun sa church. Hindi lumalago. Bakit? They are not saved by grace. They are saved by fear. Fear of going to hell. Hello? Yan, iba na ang preaching ngayon. Pagpakain ka muna bago masin. Talagang pagbaba na ng pagbaba yung value. Baka mga baba sa dulo, o punta ka na ng church, o limang daan. Okay, tanggapin mo si Jesus Christ, o 1,000, o limang libo, tanggapin mo si Jesus. Binibili na lang yung salvation. Pababa na ng pababa. Yung value ng cross. Hallelujah. So, kailangan po tayo marialign. Amen. Glory to God. You know what Paul said? This is what Paul said. I have been crucified. Ano yung discussion nila? Puro cross. Parang, ikaw ba napakuna? Kay Kristo. Yun ang discussion nila. 
Pero ngayon ang discussion na yun, ilan na bahay mo, ilan na kotse mo, ano na labgin mo? At iba yung discussion ngayon. Pag in-invite ba kita, magkano ba bibigay ko sa yung honorary fee? Liman libo, ten thousand, magkano ba? Iba na ang usapan, sa kanilang usapan nila, cross. Dito ang usapan, pero... Kaya bumaba yung power ng Panginoon sa church. Naging materialistic tayo. May mo sa'yo katabi. Gusto mo ba itong naririnig? Kasi, kasi minsan pag ganito ang usapan, parang ano eh, nakakabagot yung preaching. Parang ang ano eh. Di ba? Pero nagtatanong ka, alam nyo, bakit nawawala ng power yung church? Eh nawala yung cross eh kapalitan ng pera. Para bang yung church hindi na nag exist pag walang pera? Meron ba kayo nakita sa Book of Acts? Yung kapangyarihan ng, pa, ng church sa Book of Acts, hinugot sa pera, sa dami ng pera? <clears throat> Bakit umuwi yung 3,000 na yun na punong-puno ng, punong -puno ng conviction ng Holy Spirit? Kasi sabi ni sabi ni Peter, You rejected the stone. That stone that you have rejected is the same Christ that you have crucified. Amen. Ganun, ganun ang preaching. Hallelujah. Ano sabi ng Bible? Umuwi sila na parang tinarakan ng kanilang puso. The preaching of the cross. Sabi niya, whom you crucified. Nag-guilty sila talaga ng todo. Ngayon, Pinagpipreach tayo. O, oh, dahil-dahil lang mag-preach ha, baka ma-offend yung mga tao. <laughs> Nakaka-offend talaga yung cross. Yes. Talaga mo mo lang, di ba pwedeng i-dilute ang message ng cross, kapatid? Yes. Pag dinilute mo yan, tinanggalan mo ng yes. power to convict. Huwag natin pagandahin yung cross. <laughs> Kaya yung mga tao, para bang ampaw ang pagkakristyano nila kasi hindi, hindi tumatak sa espiritu nila kung ano ginawa ni Lord sa cross. Sabi niya, I've been crucified. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I'm living in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Yan yung kanyang motivation. Ba't siya nabubuhay? Galatians 6.14, Paul declared, May I never boast except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Maginda. Kaya pala ganito ka pa ang mga pangyarihan. Sabi niya, wala nang dating ang mundo sa akin. At yung mundo, wala na rin dating sa akin. Ha? Sabi mo sa yung katapit, may dating pa ba ang mundo sa iyo? Ah, Natrack ka pa ba? Sa mundo. Are you still attracted to the world? Paul said, the world is already crucified to me and I to the world. Kaya nasabi yan, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah! Now, that's why in Corinthians 15.31 says, I affirm, ano ang kanyang pinagbo-boast? I affirm by the boasting you which I have in Christ, Jesus our Lord. Even Paul said, he said, I die daily. Sabi mo sa inyong katabi, kapatid, choose to die daily. Hallelujah. Listen, if we cannot demonstrate, we cannot demonstrate the power of resurrection, it is because you fail to die to yourself. Amen. But the more we die to ourselves, the greater will be the expression Amen. and demonstration of the power of His resurrection. Amen. That's why Paul said, I want to know Him in the power of His resurrection. 
you know, because Paul was so acquainted with the power of resurrection, he want to die on the cross to relate on Christ kung paano siya namatay sa cross. Nangihinayan siya because he was a Roman citizen. Bawal sa kanyang mapako. He was beheaded. Hinayang na hinayang siya. Nainggit siya kay Peter. Sabi, buti pa si Peter, napahako. Ako napugutan lang. Ganun yung usapan nila. Tapos tayo na naririto. Ang liit-liit na problema gustong sumuko. Lumipat lang yung church sa ibang church na lungkot. Iyan mo siya. Pag lumipat ba yung member mo sa ibang church, tutulo ba dugo mo? Hindi pa, di ba? Sabihin mo sa ito sabi, pati bayan na ito. Matir na matibay sa panahon ngayon. Are you here? Kung mas malakas ang kapit mo sa cross, mas matibay ka. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now listen to this. Then he said to them all. Everyone say all. All. He said to them all. Sabi mo sa yung katabi, kasama ka ro. Kasama ka ro. Walang eksempte. Sabi niya, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily. Follow me. Paulit-ulit po itong word na ito. Alam mo bakit hindi mo maintindihan itong words na ito minsan? Hindi ako ayaw nating intindihan kasi masakit. Ang dinidinay natin yung cross, hindi tayo. Pero kung mabubuksan ang isipan mo sa revelation, when your mind begin to understand the revelation of the cross, you will embrace the cross. Yes. Yes. Listen to this. When, when Peter was so young, he denied the Lord, he ran from the cross. But when he matured, he embraced the cross. Amen. He began to understand the plan of victory. Hindi mo siya yung katabi. Gusto mo talaga manalo. Hindi mo siya yung katabi. Gusto mo talaga manalo. Carry the cross. Yeah. Alam mo, ang sarap ma-refresh sa ganito. Yung mga bumabalik ka sa pinaka-ugat ng iyong pananampalatan. Amen. Kasi pag hindi tayo na-refresh dito mga kapatid, baka tinanggap na natin yung offer ng mundo. Buti nga may pandemic, hindi ka nakaalis ng bansa. Minsan ang tingin natin sa Pilipinas, hindi tayo pagpapalain ni Lord sa Pilipinas. Sa Amerika, o sa Canada, o sa kung saan saan bansa, sa Japan, sa Middle East. Kasi yung Diyos nila, pagpapalain. Para sa Pilipinas, para bang, parang hindi Diyos ang Diyos sa Pilipinas. At gusto gusto natin kumalis. Hindi ba tayo pwedeng buhay ng Diyos sa Pilipinas? Amen. Ha? O kulang lang ng cross. Ba't alisan tayo ng alisan? We need to understand this. We need to go back to the root of all victory. It's the cross. Amen. Amen. Number three, the cross defeated Satan and principality. Now the scripture says this in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin. And God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins were all Taken away! <laughs> In other translation, God triumphing over them. He triumphed over them through the cross. First Corinthians 3 10, God was kind and let me become an expert builder. I laid the foundation on which others had built, but we must each be careful. Be careful. 
Be careful how you build because Christ is the only foundation. Christ is the only blueprint of your victory. Christ is the blueprint for your life to be transformed into the same image. God said from the very beginning, He began to work man. And He said, let us create man in our own image. So God is working inside of you. He's working the image of God inside of you. Ang mukha ng church ay hindi para mihan. Ang mukha ng church ay hindi para payamanan. Ang tunay na mukha ng church ay kamukha ni Kristo. Amen! Sabi mo sa inyong katabi, doon papunta ang church. Saan papunta? Nagiging kamukha ni Kristo. Tali ko sabihin, Pasto, kasi it's possible to have numbers but not like Christ. It's possible na yumaman but not like Christ. So we got to be careful. That's why the Word of God said, be careful how you feel. The pattern is, the blueprint is, Upon this rock of revelation of who I am, which my Father had revealed to you, Peter. Upon this blueprint of who I am, I will build my church. Who? Sanat. Pero bakit ngayon parang atindi ng kompetisyon ng paramihan at payamanan? Kailangan marimay po tayo. Bakit ka ba nagpaparami? Ano ba nagmamotivate ng pagpaparami? Para maging boses ka? O para matanggap ka? Pag konti ang church mo, hindi ka tatanggapin as church? Ha? Napipressure ka? O, oh, yung iba naman, ah, sige, total, hindi natin kaya magparami. Magpayaman na lang tayo. Hmm? Siyempre nga naman, pag mayaman ka, igagalang ka. Pero pag yumaman ka ba, nagiging kamukha mo ba si Kristo? That's why God said, be careful how. Hmm. Hello? Mga kapatid, sino rito nare-remind? Sino rito nare-review? Very good. Because time will come. Everything you build will be put to the test. Yes. That everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that built by men will be shaken. Everything that will build by Christ will start. Yes. Will never be shaken. Yes. It will continue. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So, Every obstacle that hinders your going to the cross must be overcome. Be mo siyeng katabi. Kailangan mo ma over na. Now let's set the scripture. Remember, this is scripture. When Jesus Christ is about to the cross and he said, "I'm about to die. I am about to go to the cross." And then what happened? Peter took him in hand. Aliga, aliga rito man, man, man. Lagyan natin ng drama. <laughs> you see, for example, si, si Jesus ta. Sabi ni Jesus, I'm about to die. I will, I will suffer bruises and all of those things in the hand of the leaders and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. I will die on the cross. And then Peter took him aside. He said, Master, that can never be. See that? And then Jesus was so sensitive in the spirit. 
He direct the response, not to Peter, but to Satan. He said, Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning to say, Satan has no revelation. Yeah. Yes. He has no revelation. Binulong niya pa. Hindi mangyayari sa iyo. So, sino ang pumipigil para ikaw ay mamatay sa cross? <laughs> si Satan. From the very beginning, ang ino-offer na ni, ni Satan kay Jesus is the whole world. He's offering the whole world to, to the Lord in Matthew 4. He said, I give you the whole world. Hello? But Jesus never treated destiny. Because if you have the whole world, the material things, you will be defeated. But if you have the cross, you will have it. Amen. You can just imagine. Look what Jesus revealed. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. In other translation, he said this. That Peter, that Peter took him aside to speak to him privately, began to reprove and charge Jesus sharply, saying, God forbid. God forbid, Lord. This must never happen to you. In other words, Satan is saying, Lord, you will not die on the cross. This must not happen to you. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. You are in my way. You are an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me. For you are mighty. You see how Satan works when he comes to you? He, you are not mighty what partakes not of the nature and the quality of God, but of men. Meaning to say, when Satan comes to you, he comes to you. Sa lahat ng interest ng tao. When Satan approaches you, he approaches you with your interest. <laughs> Sabi mo sa iyong katabi. Sabi mo sa iyong katabi, mag-ingat ka sa bulong. Be careful of that whisper of the devil that pertains to your interest. Hallelujah! Now look at this. Pakinig kayo. No, wala pa si Lord, sabi niya, wala pa sa cross. The Lord is not yet on the cross. Satan is preventing him to go to the cross. But the Lord said, You know, Satan, you're an obstacle to me. You are minding the interest of men and not the interest of God. So Satan at that time was rebuked by the Lord. He was rebuked. And then when Jesus was already on the cross, the devil never gave up. Look at what the devil says on the cross. Matthew 27, 40. And saying, he was what? Ridiculed by men. You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. <laughs> and come down from the cross. <laughs> Hello? You see, the devil comes to you and he said to you, save yourself. But Jesus said, deny yourself. <laughs> so, where is the point of struggle in your life? Every time you save yourself. Hmm? Hallelujah. Magkapatid, nandiyan pa kayo? Hmm? Bakit ka kumukonekta sa mga mayayaman na missionary? Because you want to save yourself. Hmm? Hindi masamang kumonekta sa Korean. Kung totoo yung mga Koreans na yan. Diba? Nakakapanahimik, di ba? Diba? 
So, di mo siya yung katabi, bumabaon ba yung cross? <laughs> Siyo ito nakakuha ng revelation. Ano sinabi niya? Ano sinasabi ni Satan? Save yourself. Ano ba sinabi? Nakababa, nandun na ako sa cross. Panalo ka na pag napunta ka sa cross. The moment you reach the cross, you won. But Satan is still convincing you, come down from the cross. <laughs> <laughs> Bakit mo nasa pa? Why did you slap your brethren? It's because your hand is not nailed on the cross. Bakit ang dali mo makapagsalita? nang masama kasi hindi pa nabugbog yung bibig mo. <laughs> si Jesus nabugbog. Halos hindi makapagsalita. Kaya piling-pili lang yung salita niya. Seven last words. Hmm. Alam mo, pagka nasa cross ka na, hindi ka na madalda. Konti na lang ang words. <laughs> Ngayon, kapag nakita mo yung kapatid mo, medyo madaldal pa, wala pa yan sa cross. Sabi mo sa'yo yung katabi, Brad, nasaan ka na ba? Pasarbao! Ay, siya. You see, Ngayon nyo ba, listen, listen, naiintindihan mo na ba paunti-unti itong revelation na ito kung gaano katindi? Kaya gusto ng kaaway na tanggalin itong revelation na ito sa church? Pinalitan ng prosperity? The devil said, save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. Tahimik lang si Jesus. Hindi niya pinapiging ka. Satan naman, kamot ng kamot. Siya ba, siya ba talaga to? Bakit naman ito? Siya ba yung duduro? Eh, pinapatay ko na nga siya. Bakit? Hindi yata ito yung son of God na duduro ng ulo ko eh. Pinapababa ko. Ayaw buwa ba? Hindi siguro to. Hanggang cross, walang idea si Satanas. Amen. Hello. Parang ganito. Jesus is advancing the kingdom. He cast out devil. He lay hands on the sick. He raised the dead. The demons report to Satan. This is what Jesus is doing. And they said, the only way for that, that man to, to stop advancing and taking our territories among people, let's kill him. <laughs> when they begin to kill him, Jesus become unstoppable. Amen. When you kill him, you are totally defeated. That's why the devil's defeat is on the cross. Hindi niya alam. Habang sinasaksak niya si Jesus sa tagiliran, sinasaksak niya ang kanyang sarili. Kaya si Jesus, tahimik lang. Kasi baka mamaya mabulgar yung plano. Shhh. Kaya mong patayin nila ako. Bakit? Kasi pag pinatay nila ako, panalo ka. That's the reason why the devil doesn't like this word. When he begin to walk, when you begin to focus on the cross, nanginginig na ang kaaway sa'yo. And the devil is saying, he already found. He already discovered our defeat. Hallelujah. And yet, it is being hindered. It is being covered by the enemy. That's why the devil put what? A veil in the minds of the people so that they may not see and understand the glory of Christ. Amen. The power of the cross. 
So tell your neighbor, kami mo siya kapatid, don't go down on the cross. The moment you get up from the cross, you're defeated. Bakit? Pag bumaba ka sa cross, makakasuntok ka. Pag ang kamay mo nawala sa cross, makakasampal ka ng asawa, na kung ano-ano. Hello? Sabi mo sa yung katabi, manatili ka lang dyan. Bakit? Kasi pag nakapako ang paa mo, hindi ka makakasip. <laughs> diba? Ano ba nasaksak-sak cross? His heart was what? Pierce! Nasaksak ang puso. Pag ang puso mo nasaksak, tanggalan lahat ng toxic of murder, fornication, adultery, which is in the heart of men. The deceitfulness is in the heart. The heart is most the deceitful things. It must be pierced. Hallelujah. Di mo siya yung katabi. Naintindihan mo na ba? Ayaw ipaintindi ito ng kaaway. Ang gusto niya, yung world, yung ino-offer ni Satan yung mundo. Everything, the gadget, pera, kung saan-saan. But the moment you be like Jesus, you focus your eyes and your spirit to Jerusalem with an iron will to go to the cross. The devil's days are numbered. <laughs> That's why when you die on the cross, Jesus spoke a word of victory. He said, Amen. it's finished. Yes. The devil is finished on the cross. Hallelujah. Sabi mo sa'yo katabi, ngayon, alam mo na. Praise God. Taposin na natin ito. Para makapagkapit tayo. After acquiring salvation through the cross, we need to work out our salvation. Sabi mo siya yung katabi, work out. work out. It doesn't say work for because you're already saved. Yes. It say work out. work out. Meaning to say, if you are making a bodybuilding and you have a definition of your abs, may, mga, uh, may definition ka ng mga, mga, mga muscles mo because they're every day, consistently, you are working out. Weekly, you are working out three times a week to maintain the contour, the definition of your abs. You will continue to have workouts to maintain that muscle in your body. Is it right? All truth is parallel. You need to work out salvation. Mm. Hello. How do you work out salvation? You maintain your devotion. Amen. You maintain God's word over your life. Yes. You maintain worship. Yes. You maintain fellowship. You maintain obedience. Yes. How do you work out? You maintain fasting. Mm. Hello? Para kung mukunti na lang yung fasting. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12. What Paul said, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Wow. Why fear and trembling? Paul said, "This when I come to you, I come to you with fear and trembling. I had... I, 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 I discipline my body. I buffet my body. Why? Because after I preach to others, what is my fear? That I might become a castaway. Mm. Hello? Na matapos tayong mag-preach sa iba, tayo naman ang disqualify. Mm. Wow. That's why we need to what? We need to work out. Sabi mo siya ikatabi, mag-work out. 
huwag kayo maging kampante. Lalo na ngayon, malapit na dumating si Lord. Mas lalo kang mag-work out. <laughs> Gusto ni Lord. Maganda, maskulado. Merong abs. Walang pakwan. <laughs> ah. Hello? <laughs> I'm talking about spiritual muscle. Hello? So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Every day we work it out. Every month, every year. We don't stop working out. Because we understand the doctrine, the doctrine of salvation. You are being justified by faith. The justification level. When you accepted Christ, you and you repent. That is the justification level. But the moment you receive Christ, you start going on a journey of sanctification. You are being saved. You are sanctified every day. You are being saved. You choose life. You choose the will of God. You choose to obey. That's sanctification. And our body one day will be glorified. So justification, sanctification, glorification is equal to what? Salvation. That's the complete doctrine of salvation. So what is this working out? You understand the walk of sanctification. Every day. That's why Paul said, 1 Corinthians 9.27, Like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardship, subdue it. <laughs> Hello? That's why we need the cross. You subdue the body. You subdue the flesh. How do you subdue the flesh? Huwag kang magbabad sa social media. Diba? Yung next generation yun, hindi makatulog hanggang walang social media. Parang yun mo pang patulog. He said, For fear that after proclaiming to others, the gospel and the things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test and be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. What is a counterfeit? Mukhang tama, hindi naman pala tama. What is a counterfeit? You preach the right word, but you leave the wrong word. Oh. Hello? False prophet become false not because of what he is saying. He become false because of a wrong lifestyle. Yes. Balaam prophesied about Christ. It happened what he said. But he is a good prophet or false? He is a false. Not because of what he said. Everything that Balaam said, it, it, it was fulfilled. Is it right? But how come he became false? Because of a lifestyle. So we need to be one. We need to be corrected. We need to be reaffirmed. We need to be reminded. We need to be realigned. The world is talking about reset. So we need to be reset again into this truth of God. Ba't ako nagsimula rito? Pwede naman ako magsimula sa magagandang matitinding preaching this day. But we need to go back to the foundation. Hallelujah. What is the foundation? Genesis 1.28 said, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Subdue it. Everybody say, subdue. subdue. Ano sinabi ni Paul? I subdue my body. Because this body is made of earth. Subdue the earth. How do you subdue the earth? By the cross. Amen. Amen. Kaya pa ba? Sino rito natutulungan itong word na ito ngayon? 
Kasi minsan pagka ganito po usapan para bang hindi interesado yung next generation. Pero alam mo kung bakit kanakatayo ngayon? Dahil maganda ang pundasyon mo ng cross. Why you're still standing today? It's because of your understanding, your deep intimacy with the cross. So, verse Peter 4.1 said, So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, Peter said, He suffered flesh for us for you. Arm yourself with the same thought and purpose. Patiently to suffer rather than fall, rather than fail to please God. So dying to self is pleasing God. Amen. Now look at this. For whoever had suffered in the flesh by the cross, having the mind of Christ is done with intentional sin. Those who died with Christ and suffered with the same crucifixion has already stopped pleasing himself and the world and pleases God. Amen. So the key to please God is through the way of the cross. Mahirap yes. i-please si Lord kung hindi sa pamamagitan ng cross. Why is it that God was so pleased with the offering of Abel and rejected the offering of Cain? Because offering of Abel is the cross. There's blood in it. Meron bang dugo sa gulay? Wala. Minsan, nag offer tayo kay Lord, walang dugo. That's why, that's why David said, I will not offer unto the Lord. That cost me nothing. What is the cost? You die to yourself. That's the cost. Hello? Minsan kasi pagka nagbigay tayo, yung walang dugo, yung komportable ka. Hello? Di ba? Praise God. Nakapanahimik ka na. Hmm. When we, when we give to God sometimes, we give something in our comfort zone. Sacrificially, bihira natin ma-exercise. But when it comes to your family, it comes to your loved one, okay lang na ibigay. Anak ko naman niya. Ibigay ko sa kanya lahat. But when it comes to God and to the words of God, okay na yan. Hello. Praise God. So, look at what what Peter is saying. Those who arm themselves with the same suffering has already stopped pleasing themselves and the world. Pag hindi pero ganito ang iyong pag-iisip, you still pleasing yourself and the world. The only way that pleases God is through the cross. Amen. Nothing else. No one can satisfy the heart of God except the offering of the cross. Hallelujah. Today, as we close, bago tayo magkape. Today, what is the cross? Ano si David? Today, what is the cross? Any kind of situation or circumstances that God allow, which facilitates the death of self, is the cross. Hallelujah. 
Paano ka susurvive sa loob ng local church mo, pastor? Maraming nakaka-offend. Maraming nakakasakit. Maraming nakakasugat. Maraming gossip. Maraming slandering. Paano ka makakasurvive? It's the cross. Any situation, any circumstances that facilitates the death of self is the cross. Amen. Consider it as a cross. Hello? Sino po rito nakaranas ng matitinding challenges minsan sa buhay? Ang attitude mo minsan, hindi ka na makapagsalita, nananahimik ka na lang. Di ba nakakapanahimik? Bakit? Kasi tinulungan kang mamatay. You begin to have an introspection. Pag nakakaranas ka ng mga situation, you begin to ask, God, where have I done wrong? Ano ang nagawa kong mali, Lord? Nagsisimula kang mag-open kay Lord. Hello? Nagsisimula kang mag-break. You start breaking before God. Hello? So there's a lot of things that is happening around us. But consider it as a cross to facilitate the death to oneself. The more we die, the more He lives. When He died, He lives. That's why when Paul said, I die daily, He's saying, Christ lives in me daily. When this thing happened, the church will rise into the stature of Christ. Christ began to demonstrate His power through the church because He began to understand the ultimate key of victory is through the cross. The devil can no longer condemn you. The devil can no longer accuse you. Why? You have won. That's why there's a song. The victory of the cross Standing in love for all The Lamb that was slain for all To enter the throne My answer is in the blood The Spirit that raised the Son Emmanuel Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> the victory of the cross, standing in love for all. The Lamb that was slain for all. To enter the throne, my answer is in the blood, the spirit that raised the sun, <laughs> Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God. Victory of the cross. Ah, standing in love for all. The lamb that was made for all ah, to enter.
present for all. No sickness can stand in the presence of Just 
Jesus paid the highest price. He has paid the highest price that we have a righteousness. God made us righteous. Jesus became sin so that we sinner become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Declare your victory.
this very moment. I want you to think every kind of benefit that the cross of Calvary has been for you. Every kind of benefits. I want you to receive and claim it. If you understand the highest price of God's provision and victory, He start claiming what Christ has paid for you, for your life, for your family, for your future. It's been paid by the highest price. The victory has been paid. Your healing has been paid. Your security of the future has been paid. Hallelujah. Start claiming it. Start thinking. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that you made us right, righteous before you. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for writing our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord, for accepting us by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah, God, right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the ultimate victory. You have given us authority over the devil, over the principalities, over demons. Because of the blood, you triumph over them. By the cross. Father, we give you praise. Now you are not only with us, you are inside of us. You are living inside of us. You are Emmanuel. Only Emmanuel, but Emmanuel, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Oh God, we give you praise. We worship you, we bless you. We give you praise. sister two by two right now i want you to declare god's victory over his life today from now using the power of the cross and the name of christ that's right start blessing your brother your sister releasing him from every limitation that the world has put yes god right now i declare total victory total freedom Thank you, Jesus. 